If all the sales signs up and everybody knows, 15% off the entire store. You told all the cashiers. All right, let's open the store. Las Vegas, a city on the move. People come from all around just to try their luck and dip their toe in the pool of luxurious living. Just beyond the lights and glamour of the world famous Las Vegas Strip is a place where real treasures are found. It's a place people come to claim a piece of history or reclaim a gem from their past. This is Michelle Tully and she runs this place along with her son Steve. Now don't worry yourself none, she's not connected to the mob, not as far as we can tell. She's just an expert on all things collectible and this is her place, the Charleston Antique Mall. I thought the day was incredible. We had so many people here, and everybody just really seemed to have a great time. Yeah, it was great. Did you, did, were you bringing up things a lot? And I was constantly running up to the office, bringing something, or I was constantly running to get a key for somebody That's all what around I me. Hear. I thought I was going to mostly be in my booth, but it was all over the place, great. so it was really great. Well, enough about that. Tell me, what what is this? Well, these are early to mid-century aluminum suitcases. This, this is aluminum? Yeah, they're made out of aluminum. Okay. And they're ranging from the 40s, maybe 30s, 40s, and 50s. Wow, how'd okay. you get them? Uh, just a funny thing, I'd shopped all weekend last weekend and didn't find much. I was kind of bummed out. Yeah. So, got out of, when I came out the front door, my son and I got in the car, my neighbor had just drunk all this stuff out. <laughs> and had it on her front lawn. I said, are you having a yard sale? I thought she, maybe she was moving or something. She said, yeah. And I said, well, I think everything's great. How much do you want for everything? Oh and there's my. Like, like maybe 10 or 12 items, you know, not like a huge yard sale. Oh my God, so right just, next door I, to you? Right across the street, just oh. right up there. So I just bought it all. <laughs> I'm lucky And so now yet. it's all in the mall. But, so, oh but, I, but I, really, I really think these are great. They're just so interesting. I like the rivets. You know, it reminds me of something like one of Howard Hughes' early planes. Oh, you know, yeah. With the, with the, Are these heavy? Are, uh, no. Oh, you know, no. Because they're aluminum. This would be the heaviest one. And she thought this was nautical. Mm -hmm. This was nautical. And these, I think, would have just been regular suitcases. But no, they're very lightweight because they're aluminum, not steel. If they were steel, I couldn't lift them. So. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. What do you have on these these little um, puppies? Well, this one, because it's really unusual, I've got 295, and I think those were both like 125 and 165. Oh, so you're selling them separately? Separately, yeah. Yeah, because they're different styles. But most people buy them, and they use them for decor. I you can know, they see stack that. them and put things yeah. on them. Yeah, and they don't really use, physically use them anymore. Mid-century, I mean, the, with the, the silver, the color, the aluminum. Yeah, or even the they, industrial look, you know, yeah, that was oh, really yeah, popular. Oh, yeah, perfect. So, you know, put that in a, mo a loft. Wow, wow. Great, so. And I heard, I. I want to see the desk that you brought in. You have a minimalist desk? Right, yeah. I want to take a look okay, at that, well, can we? Take a look, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is an infamous desk. Yes, it's, a, it's pretty interesting. I picked it up at a estate sale, along with this Lucite sculpture and this Murano lamp. This lady had definitely the uh, mid-century look to her. This was actually made in 1970, the desk. Really? Yeah, and it's by a company called Bruton, and John Wayne is the, uh, John Wade is the uh, designer, but it's it's called the Beam Desk. I can it see looks why. it like kind of looks like an I-beam yeah. or something it's, like that. It, it yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's, now, it's called a minimalist desk. It's very that? minimalist, yeah. For people yeah. who want sparse, is that what it's right. all about? Yeah, and you could probably wow. use it, more, other than a desk, you could use it as a room divider because it's totally finished on both sides. Oh. So, you know, it, it could float, you could use it as a credenza or whatever, but, but most people, they call it a desk. Okay. And it's um, very, very high end. I've seen I it on sites on the internet and they sell for about $5,600. Really? Yeah. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, Are we selling it for 56 dollars No. I'm, we're selling it for $795, which is a fantastic deal. Wow. But wow, Mary. I bought it right and I'm, so, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. All right. But, but I am I so glad to see it. Thank you. Okay. I really appreciate seeing it. Thanks. Michael? 
Oh, hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Well, I'm finally starting to get settled down a little bit. Good. It's been a long, <laughs> involved process, as you know. But, well, good. Um, we are so glad that you joined the mall. I can't well, wait to see when you're all set up. Well, it's going to take me a while, but we'll get there. And I'm so glad to be part of the family oh. here. And I'm looking forward to working with everyone. We're glad to have so. you. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I've got to get back to work. And okay. I know you've got things. Okay, I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Hi, Michelle. Good. good, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. What is this? These are a pair of birds. <laughs> I see that, thank you. <laughs> it's Come it's, on, tell it's me a about phoenix it. bird and in okay. Chinese in China they call it Feng Wang. Okay. Feng Wang. Which means it's a male and female uh, All right. depiction. All right, it's, are we going to have a mating thing going on here? Not really. It's, it's, it's actually a yin and yang Okay. in, in Chinese mythology. It's oh. actually a mythological bird, yeah. Really? Now this is cloisonne, This right? is cloisonne, which is a very beautiful. old technique. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's of uh, designing um, um, a metal vessel. What they do is they use a colored glass paste uh -huh. and then they uh, incorporate it on the either bronze or... Now don't do the, they do layer upon layer? Is well, there are, are, in one techniques they do that, but there's three techniques of glossary, oh, yeah. I didn't know There's that. a concave, convex, and a flat technique. You're getting way too <laughs> for me. All I know is that these are yeah. just beautiful. Yeah. Does something go in the in the here? In yeah, the it's actually a joystick. Uh, handle vase, you know. Oh, it's, so you put flowers or something? No, you in put there? the incense oh. here, yeah. Like a okay. yeah. yeah. But this is this is an archaic depiction of a Ming dynasty uh Closone. This is a Qing dynasty which is about three hundred year old. These are three hundred years old? No, this is about three hundred uh, the, the the Ming dynasty is about five hundred year old, but this is a Qing dynasty which is three hundred year old later. I so keep track of all this. Late, I can't believe yeah, this. Late, late uh, 19th century up to early 20th century. But this is extremely rare. They're mirror image, and it's quite rare. They're yeah. beautiful. They yeah. are absolutely beautiful. Can yeah. I peek at the price? Uh, well, uh, uh, one piece uh, at the auction, at auction sold for about $5,000. So I'm selling it to half okay. the price. Yeah, so $24.95 each in our store wow. so that's wow. a great great price okay yeah well thanks Diane thanks for sharing it with me thank you Michelle My disco girl, yes, how are you doing? Indeed. You know I love the 70s. Good, how are you? What's up? All right. I wanted to show you some of the 70s things I brought in today. Okay. Right. I figured you'd be the 70s. Absolutely. You know me. Um, board wow. games. Remember back in the time when we used to sit with family and play I with remember our... watching oh. this show. Oh, I that was one it. of my favorites. One of my favorite shows. I mean, Vinnie Barbarino and... And then we have Parcheesi, where people would sit down and play. I played that. Oh my goodness. I love Parcheesi. Look at the graphics on these. Aren't They're they beautiful. Great? Perfect condition. And of course, all in the family. Look at Edith. Archie Bunker. Great, right. Edith's face. She says everything, doesn't she? <laughs> Let like me the... see that. Let me yeah. see that. So cool. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like some of the dealers in the mall. Yeah, huh? I know, that right? Face. Like, really, do I have to? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to put this up as a poster. Yeah. I love I the graphics. So yeah, they're, they're amazing. They're vibrant and they're, yes. it's great condition. Yeah. Wow, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it is. I find, I try my wow. hardest to find great things in great condition. Well, thank you so much for showing me. I got to oh. get back to work. I'll see you later. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Bye. Bye. Now, don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back with more from the Charleston Antique Mall.
good buddy Don. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. What's up? Uh, just another glorious day in the shopping mall. Hey, home. what is this? This happens to be a uh, Pepsi salesman sample cooler from 1945. Really? And they add, they would give these out to the uh, store owners that placed big orders with them. And this, this is this is metal. This is like a real cooler, isn't it? This is exactly like a real cooler. Wow. Uh, it's for its age. It's not too bad. Uh, it does have quite a nice paint. That's the original paint. It's oh my still gosh. on it. Wow. So it's. Uh, You're a Pepsi protected. collector, aren't you? Yes, I am. W been... What made you go to Pepsi instead of Coke? I've always wanted to ask you that. Uh, Actually, when I met my wife Phyllis, she had a character glass of uh, Slowpoke Rodriguez okay. that they gave out in gas stations here or there when it was a big promotion. Yeah. I started with Slowpoke Rodriguez, well then I found out that there was a, a set of 18. Oh my God, so, so, now, so one glass grew into a whole collection. One glass led to another, I actually have over 400 character glasses now. So. Plus everything else. Plus everything else. What does something like this go for, Don? Uh, anywhere, supply and demand, that would probably go from 1800 to $2,000. Really? Yes. Really? It's, well, I've never seen one. This is amazing. They're very few and far between. and. Uh, I am so glad that you brought it in. Uh, this is such a great addition to the mall. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsors. Michelle, come and look at what I brought in today. Is it this darling? What is it? It is a little girl's handmade doll bed oh, for her goodness. little babies. And it was probably made by a grandpa or a daddy. It has chicken wire to put the mattress on. How cute is that? It is absolutely darling. So it we can put so a little different. chihuahua on it? Uh, no. no, no dogs on this. <laughs> Nope. This is all handmade. Yes. Oh and it goodness. folds up uh -huh. for storage, you know, because a lot of time they didn't have a whole lot of room, you know, for toys wow. and stuff. But how old is this? It's probably late 1800s, early really? 1900s. Yes. Yes. And as I said, totally handmade. It is just precious. What how much are you pricing this at? I'm going to put about 120, 125 really? on it. Yeah, it's from the Midwest. It's very unique. You're not going to run across another one like this. I, I wasn't even sure what it was. It mm -hmm. really is cute. It is just precious. Pat, you came up with a winner. Oh, thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Sunflower Sue, where are you? <laughs> I'm Michelle, how are you today? I'm good. What is good. this? These are B-17 bomber pants from 1943 and 44. <laughs> These are what the Army Air Corps forces wore in the B-17 bombers. These young men were 17, 18, 19 years old. Oh my gosh. They wore a blue wired air flight suit underneath this to try to keep warm as it got to be nine, minus 10 degrees in oh the aircraft. Oh my gosh. Now this, this is leather on the outside it is and, leather. and fleece. Yes, real fleece on the inside. It was intended to keep them warm. They tried. They were wearing uh, complete oxygen masks, helmets, goggles, everything. Oh my gosh. I know it's so cold up there. They couldn't touch anything metal with their bare hands or it instantly freeze them and burn them. Really? Yeah. They were very young men, and one of the most interesting things about this is that if they could fly 25 missions and come home, 
they got to get out of the bomber. They didn't, so that's why the bombers had all the oh. insignias on them. You know, they would mark them with pictures or X's or O's or something. If they got to, through 25 missions, they got to go home. Oh, Which makes me goodness. wonder if the young man who wore this was one of those that got to go home. We hope. Yes. We hope. Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Is this interesting? It really is. Very uh, cool. It just brings history to life. It does. It it's, does. Oh. There was a jacket to match. There was the yellow Mae West vest over the top oh. in case they had to go down. It was just a very interesting time. Kind of very scary. dangerous. Yeah, scary. Yeah. yeah, only three out of every 17 bombers that went up came home. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Incredible, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. The leather was great because it protected them against the oil that came off the engines, across debris, anything that was flying around. It was basically a tin can with wings. Ooh. Very uninsulated, no air compression. It was just no pressurization how, at all. How do you even put a price on something like this? It's difficult because the collectors really do collect this. Uh, museums keep them. They I, dress mannequins with them. I wouldn't even know them. where to begin. You just kind of have to go with what the, the market is going for. But just the right person will come along and say, I don't have a pair of these. And or they might have the jacket, but they don't have the pants. And what do you have it listed for? These are 285 Wow, for a piece of history. Yeah. Yeah, and these are in really good condition. A lot of times the leather gets very crusty dried and dried out, and these are not. These oh. I found in a drawer in a barn. Oh. I really did. I was so excited to find them, but yeah, and they're still in very good shape. Even the, the uh, uh, straps are in really oh, good condition. Thank you for sharing this. You're welcome. With me. It was this, my pleasure. This was fun. But I have something even very interesting also to show you. If really? You'd like to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay, see. Okay. Good. Where is it? Right here. <clears throat> Michelle, this is what I wanted you to see. This is a Dumont TV from the early 40s. This was, the company was uh, uh, Dumont Television Network. He started making televisions and then decided that he better have a network to go with it. So he was creating and buying television stations in the early 40s. He partnered with Paramount Pictures. Paramount thought it would be a great idea to be involved in a television station. And then television got so popular that it was competing for the same customers. Dumont continued to make wonderful televisions, but this particular model is one of the very first portable televisions ever made. I've it's, never heard of Dumont. No, that's the, that's the fun story about it, is that NBC, ABC, and CBS outgrew them. Paramount was holding them back <laughs> because they were competition, and the company is only, was only in the station business for maybe 10 years. And this is the first portable one. This is the first portable television. Yes, made by Dumont. Isn't that interesting? It really is. It's a tube television, so it is powered by television tubes, which had to be repaired. You had to have a guy come into your house and repair it. And that was a whole industry. That was industry. the good old days. The good old days. Yeah. Yes, you didn't throw them away. Yes. And uh, they did all kinds of advertising, including advertising by Norman Rockwell. Really? They did a lot of their advertising for them. So we need to find the artwork that goes with the TV. Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. Oh, my God. If I could the... find the advertisement, <laughs> it would be awesome. Absolutely. That would be great. I am looking at this. Mm -hmm. That's incredibly low. I think so. 185 firm is a really good price for that. that. You can't find them. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is true. I've never seen one like this. Isn't that super um, interesting? And it's in such great condition. The gentleman that I bought that from was a television repairman. So back it works. In the day. It's it does work. He brought it to Las wow. Vegas from the Midwest, I think, and he was a television repairman before he went to work for the government. Unbelievable. Isn't that cool? Unbelievable. Very cool. Yes. And he just, he was ready to get rid of it, huh? Yes. Yes. Well, actually, his daughter cleared it out for him, oh. but yeah, he was, it was a wonderful thing. Sue, thank you for sharing this with me. You're this welcome. was wonderful. You're welcome. I think it's just really interesting. Okay. More Charleston Antique Mall in just a minute. Hey, there's my toy man. How Hi, you Michelle. doing, Michelle? How are you doing? I'm good. doing good. I love this jacket. I know. I, I saw it and I thought I thought it was me. You know, <laughs> it I, is you. I just had to have it. It drives my wife nuts, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Hey, I heard you got a James Bond piece in. I do. I have a rare one actually. Can I see it? Yes, you may. It's this piece right here, and what what makes it so rare 
is the graphics of the bad guy coming in that they did out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they never produced this car until this year with the, all the components working open. Okay? They did that on purpose so you could see how the bad guy would eject out of there. Oh my goodness. So it's all in the graphics. It's all in the graphics on, the, on this baby. Uh, I, as you know, I have an, another one right here. This one's actually newer than this one, and you can tell there's, it's got a bland box. And what makes so, this one so valuable is it, the box. It's the box. It's the box. That's crazy. Yeah, some toys are, are, are more valuable by the box what they, you know, what they come in versus some that are valuable because they only made so many. Now, you are a toy collector, aren't you? Yes, I am. I am. How'd you get into this? I, uh, well, you know, there was a TV show uh, back in the uh, early 80s uh, called Amazing Stories. Okay. And uh, I saw this one episode where there was like this elf that helped this kid that was always getting picked on, but he had all these great toys, and they, but he didn't have any friends. So the elf told him to keep all his toys and someday they'll be worth something. Aww. And he did, and uh, he became a very rich man. And I, and I looked so at that TV show. So you figured you're going to become show. a rich man? <laughs> well, not really that, but it helped me put my, my kids through school. Wow. It's just that I didn't have to take any of the money out of my, my other paychecks. So it worked out really good for me. Unbelievable. What is something like this sell for? Well, I'm asking 200 for this. I've seen this go for uh, about 300 bucks. Really? Yes, yes. It, it, like I said, it's a rare version. It's, it's, it's got the whole thing on the back. You can see where he, the, uh, the, the guy is actually... And it's all in, in the box. It's all in the box, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate seeing yeah. that. That's and great. He, you know, of course, I love 007 because that's, I am dealer 007. I know that. I know that. <laughs> The sale was great. We had a lot of fun and a lot of good times, but you know what? I'm exhausted. Let's go home. And as for you, we'll see you next time at the Charleston Antique Mall.